Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining. Uh, my name is Troy Walcott. I'm here to speak about Bridge to the Internet, a community router. So i uh, give you a little background about my story and how I got to be in this position. Um, I am one of 1,800 members that has been on strike against Spectrum Cable for over three plus years now. So um, for 40 years, we worked at Time Warner Cable, even before that, building the company to what it has what it became to become Time Warner Cable. And our 1800 group actually built out the cable system in New York City uh, over those past 40 years to what it uh, what it became and the provider for internet, uh, internet cable service and telephone for the entire city. Um, shortly after that in 2016 came Charter Spectrum, which took over Time Warner Cable and changed mostly everything in the city. So they started going from being a customer-based company to a company that was looking to drive more towards profits. Uh, they started to have attacks on their workers, uh, raising prices on customers, and it came to the point where they actually looked to remove our medical and retirement benefits in an attempt to break our union. So at that point, we had no choice but to go on strike. So from that time to now, we've been fighting um, like a normal strike would be in order to stay out withholding our services in an attempt to have the company negotiate so we were able to go back into our normal jobs from what we did building out the city over the past 40 years. But it seemed that they had different intentions. Um, their goal wasn't to negotiate. It wasn't to even try to get lower wages. It was just a blatant attempt in order to try to union bus and break our company. So right now we are part of the longest strike in the US, uh, three plus years now and still going from a company that no longer wants to negotiate. Um, there have been attempts somewhat in order to say that um, Charter was a bad actor in the city and needed to be moved out. It was not only from things they were doing to us, but also other things that they promised to the city as far as building out to underserved areas, being able to provide a certain quality of service that they were not living up to. And then the city took moves to kick them out of the state. But um, like anything else, there's consequences to that because there is no other company in the city that can provide that service. They hold a monopoly. I think it was kind of more bark than bite and they weren't able to actually move forward and take hold of what they needed to do to try to make them pay for their actions. So Spectrum reached a deal with the Public Service Commission and found a way to stay in the city and keep the bad service that they had running. So um, at a point where we saw things going not our way, it came to the understanding that Spectrum wasn't really looking to negotiate or bring us back. It was more of a, a, power, a power move in order to try to break the union and totally remove us from the city. So at that point, when we knew there was no option for us to go back, where they had no intention of bringing us back, we had to try to think outside of the box and come up with different options in order to try to move forward to do something to end the struggle that we were going through. So the first idea was to approach the city. We went to various meetings, town halls, contacted city leaders, local elected officials in order to try to speak to them about an idea we had where we would have the city become the cable provider. Uh, it's happening in different cities where it would be a municipal broadband, where the city would be the owner of the cable service, and then we would work for the city, therefore providing those funds that were now going to one big corporation back to the city in order to try to help different things besides just um, profits of a corporation, we can invest it back into the community and um, provide safe jobs and long long lasting effects for the workers in the economy but unfortunately those plans fell on more or less deaf ears so the city also came up and said that they would support this plan they had ideas in order to try to bring internet to the city but that did not take place either and we saw this as a once in a long lifetime opportunity to do something else and that's where the next evolution of what we had planned took place so Henry, this is where you can play the video. Spectrum took over Time Warner Cable in 2016 and promised to be good to residents. 
they haven't been. Spectrum has raised prices on customers for less service, took away employees' retirement and medical plans, humiliated and terminated workers, and lied about providing service to underserved areas like they agreed to do. So, we went on strike. Then we had an idea. Why do we need them? The customers pay for the service, we built and maintain it. So why do we need the people who just raise prices and ruin things? We don't. The customers hate this company. We hate this company. Why not join forces and get rid of them? So, the plan is to fire Spectrum and put new owners in their place. The new owners are us. With the public and the workers as owners, we can put new management in place to focus on customer service and quality. Then we can collect the billions of dollars we have been paying them to mistreat us and use it for our city instead. Go to unplugspectrum.com. Click on Time for a new cable option in the middle of the screen and fill out the form to show your support. From this list, we will give the first 1 million people the opportunity to be an owner of New York's cable system. Together, we can own this city. Sign up now to support and win. 1 million will become owners, millions of others will have better service at lower cost, and the city will benefit. The only loser is Spectrum. Let's find out what this city looks like when the people own it. Share this video and join the movement. Spectrum is bad. That's it. All right. And in the simplest way to explain it, that short video kind of consolidated our entire idea. So we are the workers who built out the system and know, have all the experience and knowledge of exactly how it works. We built the entire infrastructure. We have the customers who want the service and they want to get a high quality service at a lower price. So if we have us and the customers, we figured what's the need for Spectrum anymore? So why not grab the employees who built the system and the customers who work it and have us work together to own the system and we can then provide low low cost service at high quality and give good jobs to people and then just eliminate the bad guy in the middle. And everybody saw the idea and loved it, but the bad problem is we were working against a media giant. Even to this day, with three plus years being on strike, in the very city where we're on strike, there are probably 70% of the people who have no idea probably that we are even on strike. So we went and tried to start our media tour. Um, different interviews. We had an interview here with Richard Wolf. Um, we had interviews with other places where this idea was successful, with um, EPB in Chattanooga, Tennessee, where they ran a, a successful municipal broadband service with high customer service. Um, we even got some help from a uh, union organizer, Ray Rogers, who saw our strike and thought that we had the ability and perfect timing in order to be able to try to turn around this strike and win it with the plans that we had in place. Uh, one of the things that he has in place right now is a site called internetjustice.net, where it's about putting pressure on different political figures who have the ability to put some pressure on the company but, but are not, so to try to really push them in the direction that they need to, to do the right thing, not only for us, but for the city as well. And we moving from there, we, we also started our own TV show on public access network, where we have uh, a weekly show that talks about different stuff, political, labor, law, politics, and that also highlights the injustices that Spectrum has done throughout this city. So the biggest thing for us now is marketing promotion and trying to get some attention behind our cause. One of the big helps that we had was from a person that we met early on in the strike and helped us out named Eric Foreman, who was also a labor organizer and heavily involved in trying to help worker co-ops, worker cooperatives. Um, so through that connection, Eric was able to connect us with two different companies, one of them being NYC Mesh, who does a build out of networks throughout New York City where they provide uh, low to no cost service, internet service through mesh networks using line of sight transmissions where people can grab service um, and share it. And that way they kind of create their own community network. And then the point who is uh, a serve, uh, a community organization in the Bronx who does different things as far as involved in the community who set up a similar structure in part of their area where where they um, 
they do community activism. By him connecting us with them, they had a need for different stuff as far as expanding their system. And we had a skill that was underutilized. So it was a perfect partnership for us to be able to try now to work together to get something done. And that was even highlighted more by the COVID crisis. So the COVID crisis itself created a digital divide where you can now more highlighted was what was happening with the um, the need for service to be provided to kids now that were out of school and home and just showing more how much of a disparity it was between what the service that was needed and the service that was actually being provided and available to them from the current cable providers. So now our plan is to put training programs in place where we can go into these underserved areas and have the people of the community learn how to install, manage, and maintain the system and now be part in the ownership of the very system that now that once kept them out from being able to access the services they needed. And being, through that process, going through these underserved areas, we also started to see some of the other disparities, not only from the digital divide, but just in NYCHA buildings alone, where these people are living in conditions that are, some people would say less than human. And then this, the red tape that has to go through it even for us just trying to provide them low cost to no cable service at a at a fast pace to try to get it before school start, starts back, has so many hurdles, it just highlighted other things and hard conditions that they're living in. So we see this as not only being now a cable service, but also to be an organizing tool to get these people together and give them both uh, economic opportunity and political capital to try to move forward and bring themselves into a place where they have ownership in a system that's not a test or a startup, it's the cable company. So it's a multi-billion dollar company that if they can have ownership of it, they can have a, a very high stake in what happens to them moving forward and what happens in this entire city. So as we see it, community ownership of the cable system can be a key that all allows this entire thing to turn around and give people who are once underserved the ability to be on top and move forward in order to try to change things not only for themselves but the communities that they live in so with that being said that's the end of the presentation part of it and um i guess any questions would be the would be the next part wonderful thank you um so we have kind of two spaces, which maybe makes it, uh, this is our attempt at hybrid. Um, so uh, Troy, there are some questions in the chat in this room. If, if maybe you wanna, uh, you could respond to them. I see one immediately and then I'll be monitoring the main live stream chat and I can say any questions that show up there. Okay. I see. Okay, I don't know if I see the question. I see one that says, what's the board game? Spec oh, Spectrumopoly. <laughs> I see that one. Uh, and then I say, are we asking by chat or by audio video? That's the last one I see. Um, we can, uh, we can add, uh, people are free who are in the room in a session like this to ask by audio. Uh, it'll just be on screen. So it's just if you would prefer not being recorded, then type in chat. All right. And let me make sure I plug in so I don't lose power. Yes, do that too. <laughs> okay. Um, I have a question uh, if no one else does, but I actually think that uh, someone in this room is able to, has a question. I'm here. I have a question. I, I don't know if you guys can hear me yet. We hear you. Okay. Um, to try when you were describing the ownership, like essentially you're talking about the city taking over the service. Like, do you see city ownership being different from like um, community ownership, like a nonprofit owning the system or the service? 
Yeah, I see a difference in it. I think uh, nonprofit ownership would be better than city ownership because city ownership, you have a little more accountability in the corporation because every four years you can either try to vote in or out the person who has done it. But that was our original plan. Since then, we've evolved once we didn't get any response from the city. And our plan now that we move forward with is public ownership. So we, as the employees, join together with the customers the public and the customers in order to own the in on you know in order to own the cable system so the city wouldn't be involved anymore at all i see another uh, question in the main chat uh, i'll ask that one first or next um what's the best thing that people outside of new york can do to help so if you go on to Unplug Spectrum, it's two things. One, if you go on to UnpluggedSpectrum.com, you'll see a, a big box in there that says time for public cable, or time for cable, time for new public cable option. If you click on that, the goal is to try to have, to democratize it, have 1 million people become the owners of the cable system. Everybody else will benefit from the lower cost and the um, higher quality of service, but 1 million owners join in with the employees to have a multi-stakeholder cooperative own the cable system. So the best thing you can do is go on and support and sign up to be one of the people that just supports it. And other than that, the website internetjustice.net. Internetjustice.net is what we use to put a um, pressure on the political figures in order to make them in order to highlight the things that they're doing. Like right now they have the pension funds from New York City are highly invested in companies like not only Spectrum Cable, who are universal in the city if they fit it on one, but also things like tobacco companies and so forth. And we want to make sure that we can highlight that thing and try to make it better. Something with your audio just got very muffled, but uh, we caught, I think we caught that the, the second site is the internetjustice.net. Yes. Sure. Oh, audio is great again. <laughs> um, I see another question in um, this room, uh, and then I have a follow-up question after that. Um, oh, maybe I'll go first, and then uh, if the other person in this room wants to ask the question, they can after. Um, so this is my question. <laughs> Sorry. <Go ahead. laughs> I, I thought it was really great, or um, I think that there was a nice connection between your presentation and the ones earlier in the sense of like kind of thinking at this uh, idea of like how we come to building out alternatives, maybe from a different perspective. And so in this context, um, I think a lot of it was about like labor organizing. And I'm wondering if there was like strategies in that space or, or things that come out of labor organizing that you think are tools that could be applied to other platforms or other projects in this space. So you're talking about like public ownership and a multi-stakeholder co-op. I was reminded of the campaign that someone has made to sort of buy out Twitter and turn it into a national platform. And they're, they're thinking with a bit of that like labor organizing or co-op movement plus activist shareholder model. Like, I think those are a lot of tactics that maybe technologists don't think of all the time. and yeah, like, are there any tactics or ways of organizing that you think we should be considering more of? Yeah, honestly, a lot of them are coming to us right now as we going through this and we see a lot of more things popping popping up and ideas coming as we moving forward. Like just speaking to uh, Richard Wolf about some of the things like the worker cooperatives that started with like Montragon and even things that we're looking at now with um, being able to use this now as not just something to form the cable, but as a community organizing tool where we can have people who are underserved have some political capital in, also, in order to try to move forward and change things in their areas. Uh, also having the public come together to start to do things like land trusts, where we can try to use the community and buy back some of the properties that they, some of the properties that right now that they, they're getting forced out of the areas where they live. So you open up one door, and I think it's the door of connecting people and having people work together with a common cause move towards a common goal it starts opening up doors for every other thing because it's, it's more than more or less when people get together with a common goal and they have one force working together you start to see other doors open so it's kind of opening our eyes to other avenues as well awesome so we have another question here and i think after this question we might have time for one more and that's it okay 
is that me, Don? Um, yeah, go. Troy, um, you, you talked about um, developing a co-op. And so do you see it as being like a consumer co-op or a worker co-op or like a hybrid model of some kind? Um, like who has ownership? Like I just see a whole bunch of platform co-ops. The workers don't have the capital to run them or even to start them. Yeah, so I guess that's been the fun part, if you want to call it fun. So we've been speaking with a lot of different um, cooperative uh, co companies that help start cooperatives and running through different models of how this would actually work and it's still being built out yet. So um, it's going to be a hybrid model, definitely. And then the, the most thing is the governance of how we're going to have, we want to make sure that the workers have equity where they can still have a stake in it, but also the consumers. So one can't push the other because, of course, the, the workers are going to want their price raise wages to go up a certain amount. Customers will also want the prices to go down. So having the governance in a way where they have a balance, where there's customers, there's owners, and we appoint board members who can kind of step outside of that and keep core goals of the company running in place without um, without having any type of threat of demutualization where it is just turns into another big, big, bad company. And one of the things that we believe will help do that is spreading out the ownership over so large an area, like 1 million people, along with the employees, will help kind of mitigate that and keep the company true to its goals of being able to provide service for the entire, entire community and keep that goal in mind. Okay, I think if there's any last question, uh, now's the time. Otherwise, uh, I will, uh, I'm talking slow to give space if someone's typing. Um, and I don't see any more coming in now. So maybe if folks just want to join me uh, once again in uh, saying thank you silently <laughs> to Troy by sharing emoji or uh, ASCII art or whatever, uh, or I'll do the twinkles again in um, chat uh, for the presentation. Um, it was really wonderful. It was a great way to close off our first evening of our networks. So yeah, once again, thank you to Troy. All right. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. And make sure you go to unpluggedspectrum.com and internetjustice.net. And thank you, everyone, for your support.